Hey guys, welcome to today's video. So if you're new to this channel, thank you so much for popping in. We focus on AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and how that can relate to playing video games. Um, if you've been following the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. So I've been getting a lot of uh, downvotes and things on some of my other videos, guys, related to some online games. And I really want to avoid any toxicity. So I'm actually gonna start a little bit fresh with the channel. We're gonna develop a new generic bot we're not going to target specific games, but we're going to develop specific techniques that you guys can then use. And I'll make sure that they're clear enough so they can be used on any project that you want to use. Uh, so we're going to actually, so this is actually a great video if you're just joining this channel. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to develop a computer vision uh, based solution on this video. We're going to actually, which is kind of like the foundation for everything we're going to do. We're going to learn how to get the, the screen into our uh, memory so that our computer can actually watch the screen just like we can. So you actually picked a great video to join. So let's get started doing that. Now we're gonna need some packages uh, that you probably already have installed if you've been working with my channel for a long time. If not, you're gonna need these. So we're gonna use Python's package manager, pip. So make sure you have Python. We're using Python, obviously, 3 point something. So 3.10 is what I'm using. And uh, we're going to use pip, which is Py Python's package manager. And we're going to need to import, uh, install some libraries. We're going to want to install the MSS library. This is a screen capture library. So you can do pip install MSS. I'm already going to have it installed. You're going to want to uh, import, uh, or not import, sorry, install OpenCV. So you're going to want to do pip install opencv dash python. Make sure you have the dash python there. Uh, you're gonna wanna have numpy, so pip install numpy. And we're going to be using a few other standard libraries. So that's all, those are all the installed libraries that we're gonna need. So let's get started. We're gonna create a file called screencapture.py. And I'm gonna go a little bit quick, guys, because this is actually uh, a little bit older stuff for my existing audience, but again, this is gonna give us a complete solution today, so this is gonna be good. So we're gonna import these libraries. So we'll do import MSS, uh, we're gonna import Pi Auto GUI. Oh, sorry, I didn't mention, install Pi Auto GUI, that's our automation library as well. So open CV is CV2, so we'll import CV2, we'll import NumPy, and then we're gonna use a couple of standard libraries. We're gonna import time, and we're gonna import uh, the multi-processing library. This is going to let us run multiple processes. And uh, I'm going to create a, create a class called Screen Capture Agent. This is the agent or the AI that's going to manage all of my screen capture activities. And we'll define a init function. This will be what is initialized when we create this class. And we'll create self.capture process. We'll initialize most of this stuff to none. The capture process will be the process that we spawn when we initialize our screen capture agent. We'll have self.fps, so this will be our frames per second. And we'll have self.enable preview, and we'll set this to true. And the enable preview is going to basically be determine, determines what whether that window will show. We may not want to show our computer vision window while our bot is running, but when it when we do, most of the time, especially for debugging and things, we're going to want to see what the computer sees. But it does significantly slow things down. So you know, in a situation where you want to test this thing at maximum you know efficiency, you're probably going to want to turn off those preview windows and just let the AI handle everything. Okay, next we want to get the width, we want to get the dimensions of your display. So we, there's a nice function in Pi Auto GUI. So we can say self.width and self.height is going to equal Pi Auto GUI dot size. So that will give us the width and height of our display. Mine happens to be 1920 by 1080, yours may be different. And when we create this, we can display that resolution. So we'll say screen resolution, resolution, and let's make this a formatted string. 
and we'll say self.x by self.y, oh not x, y, sorry, self.h width and height. There we go. And let's create a running function. So we'll say if underscore underscore name equals underscore underscore main, we're gonna say We'll say agent equals screen capture agent. So we'll create a new instance of this class. So we can actually test this out to make sure that our PyAuto GUI library is working properly. And there you go, my screen resolution is 1920 by 1080, so that looks good. Yours is obviously gonna be your resolution. And let's create a monitor so the monitor is basically the region of the screen that we want to process. So we're starting to get into some of the customization now. And because I want to do a better job, one of the comments in one of the videos before I you know, hid some of them, one of the comments was we want to have a better tech stack. So we want to be able to you know, make this you know, more generalizable. And that's what we're doing now. We're going to create a generalizable AI that we could, then can use for all different types of activities. So. A good practice is to have settings stored in a file. So I'm going to have settings.py. And this is where I'm going to um, uh, have all of the settings for my AI. And we obviously want to import settings so that we have access to the settings inside of our other files. So inside of settings.py, um, I'm going to create a variable called monitor, uh, or let's call this Let's call this comp viz um, top left. And let's make this a tuple. So we'll say x and y coordinate. So the, the 0, 0 is going to be the top left hand corner of our monitor. And then we'll say comp viz, so our computer vision, bottom right. And we'll make this whatever you want it to be. So for example, if you wanted to, um, in my case, it'll be 1920 by 1080. <clears throat> so, and the reason we want to do this is, <clears throat> excuse me, you might want to create a bot, but it's only going to monitor a portion of the screen. This is essentially going to set a crop of the area that your AI is going to be capturing. So if you don't want to capture the whole monitor, but you want to just capture, for example, zero, zero from the top left corner down, maybe just down, you know, 700 pixels by 700 pixels. Maybe you have something <clears throat> running in the top left-hand corner of your screen. This will only capture that region, but by default, you're probably gonna wanna capture your entire screen. So this will let us easily set this uh, as a setting in the future. And let's, let's, let's keep this organized so in the future we can all work together on this. So we'll call this our computer vision settings. And this will set computer vision screen area. So that sets what our computer vision screen will, will target. Okay, and now we wanna access those settings and store them. So we're gonna create a monitor. <clears throat> the monitor is basically the computer vision monitor. So we'll say self.monitor equals, and this is gonna be a dictionary. So we're gonna have top, this is going to be settings.top left, and the Y coordinate's gonna be the one index, since we're gonna do X, Y. And we'll say left is settings.compvision, top left, this will be zero. And we'll say uh, width is going to equal settings.compviz bottom right. So the width is going to be the zero index, that's the X direction and we'll say our height is equal to settings.compvision bottom right one. So essentially all we're gonna do is create a monitor and this way we don't have to dig through the code, we can just jump into our settings and basically change those two points and it will automatically create that monitor for us. <clears throat> okay, so that's all we need for initialization. Now let's actually start uh, 
uh, let's create a function that captures the screen. So we'll call this capture screen. We're going to pass in self as an argument. And the first thing we want to do is we want to use the MSS library to capture the screen. That's what this library is here is for. <clears throat> so we're going to say with MSS dot MSS as SCT. So that's our screen capture. And then we're going to say while true. So this is going to create an infinite loop. Uh, without this, we will just take one screen capture and the program will end. So we want this thing to take, take screen captures over and over and over again. And to do that, we're going to do a while true loop. So this will be a permanent uh, loop, basically, until we break it. We're going to set self.image. So we probably should initialize that to none. So self.image, that's our screen uh, capture at any moment in time. We'll say self.image equals sct.grab. So this is going to grab. And then we want to pass in the monitor. The monitor is the region of the screen. So that's why we created that monitor variable. So this is going to grab the portion of the screen that we specified. And now we want to convert that image because it's not in the right format yet for, for our computer vision processing. We want to convert that into a NumPy array. So we're just going to overwrite. We'll say self.image equals NP. That's our num. Uh, oh, sorry. Did we do as NP? Sorry, as NP. Make sure you import NumPy as NP. We're going to want to use the NumPy library. So we're going to make this, we're going to convert this into a NumPy array. So we're going to say np.array. And then we're going to pass in our object here, which is self.image. And this will return a NumPy array and, re and store that back in self.image. OK, next we want to, uh, so this is going to store that image in memory. But we want to display our computer vision. So we have a, um, we're going to have a enable preview. We should probably put this in settings, actually. So let's delete that line. Let's put it in settings. So this will this will turn on and all, off our computer vision. So we can easily change this as a setting. Okay. So what we're going to say here is <clears throat> if settings dot enable preview. So if we have our enable preview turned on, we want to display this. So what I want to do is I don't want to display the screenshot at full resolution because it'll basically take up the whole screen. We want to shrink that down to a small manageable window. So we're going to say preview. So this is going to be our preview image is equal to CV2 dot resize. So we're going to use the resize function. The first parameter takes a matrix object, which is our NumPy array. We're going to put in self.image. And then we can, we can um, specify an exact size here if we want, but we can also specify 0, 0 and specify a ratio, which is how I'm going to do it. So instead of specifying an exact uh, uh, pixel count here, I could say I want that image to be 300 by 500 or whatever. We could do that right here. Or we can set this to 0 and specify a ratio by using fx equals 0 0.5. So that's our x scaling and our fy equals 0 0.5. So now we have a 50% scaled image stored as a preview. And we want to display this preview on the screen, obviously. So we're going to uh, call a function called cv2.imshow. So show an image. And the first parameter here is the name of the window. So we'll call this our computer vision. Oops. And the second parameter is the matrix object, the image object. That's our preview. So we're going to show that preview. And if we run this code, even though the while loop is going to keep going, um, we're not going to actually see it because it's going to display and, and kill that window so fast that, um, unfortunately, um, it will, you know, it will appear and disappear before we have a chance to even see it. So we want to add a very small amount of delay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use CV2 dot wait key, and we're going to put in a small one millisecond delay here. Okay. And 
if we run this code now, before we actually run it, so we're very close here to showing the first, uh, first step in progress here. If we run the code right now, it'll go into an infinite loop and we have no way to break it out. Now what we can do is we can use this wait key function uh, to get a key, a keyboard input back from a user and, and kill this, break this loop. So how do we do that? Well, the CV wait key, during that small delay of one or 10 milliseconds or whatever we put in there, it's gonna check was a key pressed. If a key was pressed, it's gonna return that key. So we can say key equals cv 2wait key. So if no key is, is passed back, this is none. But if, we, if, if a key is pressed during that period, it returns that key. And then what we can do is this is gonna be our break. We'll say if key equals, and we can use the ORD function to return the, and that's not gonna be like a string. That's gonna be like the, uh, the, the, uh, the integer value of that key. So we wanna convert our, our key back to an integer. So we can use this ORD function here. So this will return uh, the Unicode uh, bytes for that character. So we have a Q, this will return that value. We can compare that with key. And if they match, we can then break. And finally, after we break, at the very end of our program, it's good to clean everything up by doing a cv2.destroyallwindows. So any windows that are open, after we do all this stuff, CV2, we want you to destroy all the windows when this process ends. So let's run this. So I've created my agent. Now I need to run this function. So I can say agent.captureScreen. That will start this while loop and it should give us our computer vision until we press the Q button. Let's find out. Okay, here you go. So I've got my computer vision open. And when I press Q, the window closes and it kills, uh, CV2 kills all the open windows. So congratulations, we've got our computer vision image data now stored in the computer for us to use.